Jean Pritchard, a Gentile who's shocked at watching Nazi soldiers storm a home for Jewish children in Amsterdam and load them into a truck for deportation inspired her to enter a clandestine world of rescuing Jews, died on December 11 at her home in Washington. She was 96. Meek van der Loof, um, who was the director of the Amsterdam Municipal Electrical Works by then, asked me to find a place for his friend Freddie and Freddie's three children to go into hiding. And I couldn't find any place that would take all four of them. So then Meek moved us into the servants' quarters of his mother-in-law's house out in the country. That's that yellow house on the pictures. What, uh, and when you when you agreed to do this, what was your relationship with this person who asked you up until that time? Oh, the, his parents were best friends with my parents, and I'd known him all my life. My parents were uh, older for parents of children my age, so my parents' friends' children tended to be 10 to 15 years older than I, but I knew them all. And... Um, so Meek is the one who asked me to find a place, and uh, he and his brother built a um, hiding place underneath the um, living room floor. And um, at night, uh, I'd open it up, because when you heard a, a motor vehicle come, you knew, it, or a truck or whatever, you knew that it wasn't somebody Dutch. You knew it was most likely the Nazis looking for Jews. Um, so we practiced, and I could get him and the kids in there and cover it all up in about 30 seconds. Um, and this, this one particular night, uh, a Dutch Nazi policeman brought three not German Nazi officers to the house, and uh, I got, they were in the hiding place, but... I let them out. I let the kids out after half an hour because I hadn't had time to give the baby her sleeping powder. And she began to cry. And Freddie decided to stay in the hiding place because he was working on his PhD thesis and he was in the middle of uh, an important chapter. Some people know how to concentrate. Um, so then the Dutch policeman came back because they, it was customary for the person in hiding to sleep in the same bed uh, with a member of the host family. Because if the Nazis came and they found, say, that there were five beds slept in, but only four people, they could guess that the fifth person had gone out the window or, or something like that. Um, so th this this night, just the, 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 the Dutch Nazi policeman came back, and I couldn't think of anything else to do except to shoot him. How did you have a gun? Meek, the, 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 the Gentile who had asked me to find a place for them, had given it to me, and I had put it behind the books on the shelf above the bed, never intending to use it. Uh, I'm against capital punishment, and I'm against abortion. I can make exceptions on abortion, of course, but I am basically opposed to capital punishment and killing in general. Um, but the, your, your unconscious is quite powerful, and when it was a choice, most likely between the kids and him, I chose him. And uh, I didn't wait to see um, what he was going to do or what he was going to say. I, by then, I could... Obviously, if he'd gone into the other room, he would have seen the kids. He might have known the kids were around anyway. But my instinct was that uh, if I didn't get rid of him, those kids were doomed. So we talked briefly. We decided that uh, Carol would go walk to the village, which, of course, was strictly against the rules. You're not supposed to be out uh, during curfew, and especially if you're a Jew, you're not supposed to be out during curfew. And, and I suggested that he stay with the kids and that I go to the village, but he wasn't having any of that. And um, he went to see the baker, who in, and I have a picture of the baker somewhere, who in normal times brought his wares around in a wagon with a horse. And uh, 
The baker agreed that as soon as curfew ended in the morning, he would come with his horse and wagon and get the body. And before Carol came back, together they went to see the local undertaker, and the local undertaker agreed to bury the body in a coffin with somebody who was having a funeral the next day. <laughs>